Welcome, my dear viewer, once again to this special occasion and your favorite show, The Knowledge Quest at Hope Channel Kenya. My name is Mr. Mauta Eliud, taking you through mathematics. Our topic is differentiation. Remember, we started this topic in our last discussion and we still have more subsection of the same topic that I want us to cover before we call it a topic. Now, in our last discussion, we talked about differentiation, how to differentiate a given equation, how to go about getting the gradient of a given equation, how to get the equations of tangents and equations of normal. But today, I want us now to go to stationary points. Stationary points. But before I go to that, I left you with a, a question. I've been going through the social media platform. I've seen you guys sending us your answers. Some of them are right, some of them are wrong. But I'm going to just do it so that you can see yourself if you got it right or you got it wrong for the betterment of your mathematical skills. The question was 3x squared plus 4x plus 6. And this was passing through point 0.23. So uh, having, once I do this question, I'll be able to have covered how to get, how to differentiate an equation, how to obtain a gradient of a given equation, how to get the equation of a tangent and equation of a normal. So go with me. First of all, differentiation. We said our, our mark of differentiation is dy over dx because we are using y and x for this given equation. So how do you differentiate? 2 times this one is 6, x power 1, so dy over dx. So power 1 is just like that, then plus 4. Remember this one disappears. Why disappears? Because it's like having x power 0. 0 times 6 is 0, and now becomes 0. So this the past first part of the same topic, differentiation. From here we get what? The gradient of that given curve by substituting the value of x where x is. So I'm going to have 6 multiplied by 2 plus 4. This is 12 plus 4 giving me 16. The second subtopic that we covered, how to get the gradient of a given curve. First of all, get the gradient function, substitute the value of x where x is applicable, then get the gradient. From there, we also went ahead to say, how now do you get equation of a tangent? Introduce new points x, y. You have your points 2, 3 and your gradient 16. Get the equation. Okay? So y minus 2 minus 3 over x minus 2 must give us 16. Over 1. Cross multiply. You're getting y minus 3 is equal to 16 minus 32. 16x. 16, this one is x. So I'm going to have y is equal to 16x minus 32 plus 3. Remember, this negative decreases on the other side becomes a positive. So 32 plus 3 is negative 29. So I'm going to have y is equal to 16x minus 29. Equation for the tangent. For the normal, I said the normal is perpendicular to the tangent. And if the gradient of the tangent is 16, what is the gradient of the normal? Relationship, I said, is perpendicular. So m2 times m1 must always give us negative 1. m1 is 16. Modular by m2 we give us negative 1. Get divided by 16. By 16, so my m2 is negative 1 over 16. Use this gradient with the new points x, y, and points 2, 3. So y minus 3 over x minus 2 must give us negative 1 over 16. Cross multiply. I remember they say the negative affects the denominator of x because that's where we have the negative gradient. So I'm going to have 16 times y is 16y minus 16 multiplied by 3 is 48. The same as negative x plus 2. It crosses there, it becomes a positive, so 16y is equal to negative x plus 50. So over 16, over 16, over 16. 
So my y is negative x over 16 plus 50 over 16. So you can check your answers that you sent us on your, our social media platforms. If you got the gradient of that cover 6x plus 4, put yourself a tick. If you got the equation of the tangent as y is equal to 16x plus minus 29, also give yourself a tick. And if you got the equation for the normal as y is equal to negative x over 16 plus 50, over 16 you also give yourself a tick and if you got it wrong now you know the procedure you can do more examples just to fasten your skills in that given subtopics now moving forward and uh, i also told you that you need not forget concepts from different subtopics they are borrowed to enhance concept in the next subtopic okay so under stationary points we are going to have three points first of all is the minimum point the other one is maximum point and the other one is points of inflection I'll explain one by one. For minimum points, for a point to be called minimum, three of its points must be moving in a certain direction. For minimum, the first point must be negative. Then the gradient function is zero at that point and then goes to positive. If you find that your point, for example, in a table, we have zero, negative 2 and maybe positive 4. The first part is negative. The gradient function there is 0. And the other part is positive. Then this becomes a minimum point. For a maximum point, we move to the positive, go to the stationary point which is 0 at the gradient function 0, then come to negative. If you have five a points, for example, now here is four, zero, negative two. This is positive four. We move toward the positive side, go to the zero, then come to negative point. Then this one qualifies to be a maximum point. For points of inflection, there are two of them. We have positive inflection and negative inflection. So if, if we have positive, zero, positive. Positive, zero, positive. Going up, both of them are positive, then this is a positive inflection. Okay? But if we have negative, zero, negative. Negative, zero, negative. If all of them are negative, then this is a negative inflection. So once you do your mathematical procedures and you find that a point comes to negative zero positive that's a minimum point a positive zero a negative that's a maximum point a positive zero a positive positive inflection negative zero negative negative inflection this is just theoretical now let's do mathematical part of it and prove all these concepts working out let me get an example here y is equals to x cubed minus 6 x squared plus 9x minus 4 Before I do that, I want you to note, right below, note below, that for a gradient function for stationary points, let me just write that concept here, so you don't forget. For stationary points, the gradient function which 
Gigi same as the Y over DX as I earlier on said is always zero. For any stationary point, as long as you are told this is a stationary point, therefore dy over dx is always zero. Not that at the back of your mind or somewhere on your book. So let's go about this. First of all, we do what? We differentiate. So dy over dx is, this is 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Remember this now becomes 0. So this uh, dy over dx with the differential equation for this function. And I said that uh, for any stationary point, dy over dx is equal to 0. So equate this 0. This 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Simplify this, divide by 3. So 0 will be x squared minus 4x plus 3. What is this? It's a quadratic equation. That's a quadratic equation. How do you solve a quadratic equation? There are three methods. One is Product sum rule, 2 is completing square method, 3 is quadratic formula. So let me move. Product sum rule. I said earlier on, for product sum rule, what do you do? Look for two numbers. When you add, they give you B. When you multiply the same two numbers, they give you AC. My B is negative 4. My AC coefficient of A is 1 times 3 is 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. Which numbers can you add? You get negative 4. The same same numbers you multiply, you get positive 3. Or negative 1 and negative 3, correct. Negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. Negative 1 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 3 because 1 times 3 is 3 and negative and negative is a positive. Correct. So let's solve that. I'm going to have x squared minus x minus 3x plus 3 is equals to 0. Okay? So group them into 2. So I'm going to have what? x into x minus 1 minus 3 into x minus 1. So I'm going to have x minus 1 and x minus 3 is equals to 0. Obtain the value of x, equate this to x 0. So x minus 1 is equal to 0. On the other side of the equation, it becomes a positive. So my x is equal to positive 1. This one to 0, x minus 3 is equal to 0. So take the other side of the equation, becomes x is equal to positive 3. So I have my x value as 1 and 3. So use the two values to obtain the stationary point for this curve. How do you go about it? Look at this. Now, I have x is equals to 1. Let me start with x equals to 1. So draw a table with the three columns. x is 1. Now dy over dx at that point is what? 0. So we have used 0 to obtain x1 and x3. So at this point, my dy over dx is equal to 0. So at this point is 0. Now take a number slightly above 1. Take a number slightly below 1. So in the number line, what is the number after 1? 2. Correct. What's the number below before 1? Zero. So replace these two numbers in the gradient function. Where is the gradient function? Here. Do not replace on the equation. You will get it wrong. Replace those numbers on the gradient function because we are dealing with the gradient function, not below. So when I replace zero here, I'm going to have zero squared is zero. 
So modulo by 3 is 0. 12 times 0 is 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0. Plus 9. What is 0 plus 9? It's plus 9. Correct. Replace 2. So 3, 2 squared is 4. Okay? So 3 times 4 is 12. And 2 here, 2 times 2 is what? 12 times 2 is 24. So what is 12 minus 24? 24 is a, it's a bigger number, but it's on a negative side. So it becomes also negative 12. So negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. Okay? So this is negative 3. So you realize that we are at the positive, 0, negative. Positive, 0, negative. So which point is this? A maximum point, correct. So it means this equation, at point 1, we have a maximum point. That is done. Now use 3. As our x, when x is 3, our dy over dx is what? 0. Because we use 0 to obtain this value of x. All together. Now, which number is below 3? 2. Which number is slightly above 3? 4. So replace again 2 here. We just did the replacement of 2 and we got negative 3, so we still have that number, negative 3, 0. What about 4? Replace 4 there. 4 squared is 16. 16 multiplied by 3 is 48. 4 multiplied by 12 is 48. So what is 48 minus 48? 0. 0 plus 9 is plus 9. Are we together there? Now we have negative 0 and positive. So we have negative 3, 0, and positive 9. So this is a point of some minimum point. So it means this curve has two stationary points. A maximum point and a minimum point. Before I wrap, I just want to explain to you how we have come about these answers, just to ensure that you get how we are moving. Now, when you're given an equation, and you're supposed to find the stationary point for a given function, there are procedures that you need to follow. Number one is to obtain the gradient function, which is dy over dx. And I said, at any given point, for stationary points, the gradient function, which is dy over dx, is always zero. So once you obtain the gradient function, equate that gradient function to zero. Are you together? Yes. Now, once you have zero, and you have differentiated this equation to this, you realize that this one is a quadratic equation. And for a quadratic equation, there are procedures that you need to follow when you are calculating it. I said... I only use product sum rule. I can as, as well use completing square method to get the same answers as 1 and 3. I can as well use quadratic formula to obtain the same same answers. If you can't remember that, then you can move to our, our previous lessons and be able to understand how we got to use the three formulas. So once I solve this one using complete uh, product sum rule, I said you look for two numbers. When you add, you get negative 4. The same same two numbers without changing any figure, you multiply, you get a c. Our a here is coefficient is 1 and our c is 3. So my b is negative 4 and my a c is 1 times 3, which is 3. The numbers we got is negative 3 and negative 1. Because if you add negative 3 and negative 1, you obtain negative 4. You multiply negative 3 and negative 1, you obtain positive 3. I use the same here. So x minus 1x minus 3x plus 3 is equal to 0. Factorize by grouping them into 2. So common factor on the first bracket is x. So I factorize it out to have x into x minus 1. Minus common factor in the second bracket is 3 because 3 
is on the both side of the of that given equation so i'm going to have three into x minus one the brackets are the same so pick one of the bracket x minus one and have x minus three as the other bracket if you open this you will come back to this if you open this bracket you will come back to this given equation now equate the first bracket to zero so x minus one is equal to zero take one on the other side of the equal sign it's negative it crosses there it becomes a positive so you have positive one x minus 3 is equal to 0. Cross it there, it becomes positive 3. Now use these two to obtain the stationary point for this curve. I used, the first one is 1. When x is 1, dy over dx is 0, which is the gradient function we used. So take a number slightly above 1. Take a number slightly below 1 on a number line. So number line below one is zero above one is two you can take even below one as negative 20 and above one you can take even 100 as long as it's above one i'm not saying that you have to take immediate you can take anything above if you are comfortable in calculating that kind of mathematics take anything above one and below one on the number line be, be between negative infinity to positive infinity so replace these numbers that you have gotten above one and below one on the gradient function not the equation remember that replace that number on the gradient function which is dy over dx and not in the equations so when we have zero i replace zero here so zero squared is zero times three zero multiplied by any number is zero twelve times zero is zero so zero minus zero is zero plus nine zero plus nine we got as positive nine then replace 2 here. So 2 squared is 4. Multiplied by 3 is 12. 12 multiplied by 2 is 24. So 12 minus 24 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 9, we got as negative 3. So I have a positive, 0, a negative. I form what? A maximum point. Using the other one is when x is 3. A number above 3, 4. A number below 3, 2. So replace the same numbers again on the gradient function. 3 multiplied by 2 is 4. 3 times the no, squared. So 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. 12 and 2 is 24. So 12 minus 24 is negative. 12 plus 9 is positive 3. And with 9, how do you get 9? We take 4. 4 squared is 16. Multiplied by 3 is 48. 12 multiplied by 4 is 48. So 48 minus 48 is 0. 0 plus 9 is positive 9. Okay? So I have a negative. This should be a negative negative, zero, and a positive. So I form a minimum point. Having said that, I just want to give you one more to ensure that you understand that. Get for me this other point that I'm going to give you in a few. Just to see if you are getting it clearly. Uh, let me use this example here. Y is equals to x cubed minus 12x plus 15. What is Welcome back. When you left, I left you with this given function and I told you to find the stationary point to this curve. I hope you have done it, but I'm going to help you just to ensure that you get the right answer. Remember, mathematics is about procedures. If this given equation is given four marks or three marks, 
these three marks are s distributed according to the procedure that you follow. And therefore, it's very, very important to follow a certain procedure before you just rush to an answer. Now, the first step here is to get what? The gradient function, which is dy over dx. That gives me, differentiate this, I'm going to have 3x squared minus 12. I hope you understand how I'm getting this 3x squared minus 12. But let me not assume that. Let me differentiate it with you. For those who are joining us now, how to differentiate. So dy over dx. First of all, you multiply the power with the coefficient. So coefficient here is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. Then subtract 1 from the power. What is 3 minus 1? 2. Minus. The power here is 1. Multiply by 1 times 12 is get negative 12. Then x power 1. 1 minus 1 is x power 0. Plus this one like having a number x power 0. So 0 times 15 is 0. 0 times x is 0. Okay. And I said any number x power 0 is 1. So I'm going to have 3x squared minus 12. This is my dy over dx. Okay. And I say it now. For stationary points, what do you do? Any stationary point, dy over dx with the gradient function is always 0. So equate this one to 0. So I'm going to have 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 12. So bring negative 12 on the other side of the equal sign. It's negative 12. It crosses the other side of the equal sign. It becomes what? A positive. So I'm going to have 3x squared is equal to 12. Positive. Get the value of x. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So my x squared is equal to 12 over 3, which is same as 4. 3, 12 divided by 3, your answer is 4. So my x squared is equal to 4. But I can't solve x squared. I need to get x. So what do I do from here? I find the square root. So this square comes with this. Square root of 4 is 2. Remember, square root is either positive or negative. So my x is positive or negative 2. Why positive or negative 2? If you take negative 2 multiplied by negative 2, you get positive 4. You take positive 2 multiplied by positive 2, you get positive 4. So the square root of a number is either positive or negative. Mark that from today. Now I have x is equals to 2 and x is equals to negative 2. All these are my answers to this given quadratic, not quadratic but stationary point. Now, get a table with three columns. My x, when x is positive 2, my gradient function or dx over dy is equals to 0. So take a number slightly above 2. Fill it there. Take a number slightly above below 2 and fill it there. So above 2 we have 3. Below 2 we have 1. So replace this 1 and 3 on the gradient function. Note the equation. Our gradient function is here. So replace 1 there. What is 1 squared? It's 1. 1 multiplied by 3 is 3. 3 minus 12. Negative 9. So here is definitely, this is negative. Then replace 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 gives us 27. 27 minus 12 gives us 15. Positive. So these are positive. So I have negative, 0, positive. 0, positive. Which is what? A minimum point. Another one, when x, when x is now negative 2, 
our dy over dx is equals to zero at this point. So a number slightly above two, we have negative one. Let me not just take immediate. I can even take zero. It's above negative two. A number slightly be below two is negative three, for example. So replace negative three and zero on the gradient function. So let me start negative three squared is positive nine. Positive nine multiplied by three gives us positive twenty seven. Minus twelve gives us positive fifteen. That is zero. Then zero. Zero squared is zero multiplied by three is zero. Zero minus twelve is negative twelve. So I have a, ne a positive and a negative. So that's positive, zero, negative. This is a maximum point. So in an event, you get that this is positive and this is positive, positive inflection. If this is negative and this is negative, negative inflection, all those follow the same procedure by getting what first differentiate get the gradient function equate the gradient function to zero because that's a rule for stationary points for stationary point gradient function is always zero once you get zero get the points use the same points in the manner that i've just done here draw a small table with three numbers the number that you have gotten as your x take a number slightly before x and above x replace these numbers on a gradient function. Once you play, let's get the answers that you have, have gotten here. See whether they are positive, negative, negative, positive, and you'll be able to know if you're dealing with a point or a maximum point or a point of positive inflection if all of them are positive, positive, and a point of minimum inflection if all of them are negative, negative. Now, done with stationary points, I want now to go to curve sketching. How do you sketch a curve? By sketch, I mean it's not drawn accurately. You are just sketching. You are just sketching. I want to use the same formula that I used earlier on, equation x squared x cubed minus 6x squared minus plus 9x minus 4. How do you sketch if you are given such an equation? So first of all is to do what? Is to differentiate. We did this one before so let us differentiate this one. I'm going to have what? dy over dx is equals to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Simplify that. So x squared minus 4x plus 3. We say this one is what? Is the gradient function, right? And the sectional point is 0. So I'm going to have x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation. Therefore, solve it. Product sum rule. Numbers, when you add, you get negative 4. We might get 3. We did this one before. So we have x squared minus x minus 3x plus 3 is equal to 0. So group them into two factorize. x into x minus 1 minus 3 into x minus 1. So x minus 1, x minus 3 is 0. So equate this into 0. So x minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. And x minus 3 is equal to 0, x is equal to 3. So once you have your value of x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 3, this one marks your turning point where we have the 0. So how do you sketch that curve? Draw a Cartesian plane with the coordinates zero, 
negative one, negative two, one, two, three. So replace this one to get the value of y, the coordinate of y. So when x is one, what is y? When x is one, what is y? So replace one here. One squared is one. One one cubed is one. One squared is one times six is one minus six. Nine times one is nine. So plus nine minus four. I want to get the coordinate of y when x is 1. So 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 9 is positive 4. Positive 4 minus 4 is 0. So this coordinate is 0, 1. Coordinate number 3. We're using number 3. 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9. 9 multiplied by 6 is 50, 54. Correct. So we have 3 cubed, which is 27, minus 54, plus 27, then minus 4. 27 plus 27 is 54. 54 minus 54 is 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So this point is negative 4. 3, 3, negative 4. Remember, this is uh, just the, uh, the opposite of it. X is 1 and Y is 0. So my turning point is at 1, 0 and 3, negative 4, which are this point. Let me have this one, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So 1, 0, 1, 0 is this point. And 3, negative 4, 3, negative 4 is that point. So it means that is my turning point. Meaning that I can have, I can sketch a curve to have that as my turning point, come down, have that as my turning point, it can go anywhere else. I've done the sketch for this given function as it has looked at there. So you only focus on the turning point you focus on the turning point and sketch that curve, which is the same as y is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4. Always remember to write the equation on the curve that you have sketched. Okay, let me cement that information using a different a different equation or function rather the one I used last was y is equals to x cubed minus 12x plus 15 you have to use that given function to sketch a curve of y is equal to x cubed minus 12x plus 15. The same, same procedures that you are going to follow. First of all, you do what? Differentiate and get what? The gradient function, which is now what? dy over dx, giving us 3 multiplied by 1, x3 minus 1, minus 12, multiplied by 1, x1 one minus 1, plus 15, x power 0 minus 1. Now this becomes 0. If you want, 0 times 15 is 0, times x is 0. So I'm going to have dy over dx as 3, x squared minus 12. Correct. Because this is 0. And number x power 0 is 1. 1 times 12 is 12. Once you've done that, go to the next step. For stationary point, dy over dx is 0. So I equate this to 0. So I'm going to have 3x squared minus 12 is equal to 0. Take this on the other side of the equal sign. So I'm going to have 3x squared is equal to 12. Get the value of x divided by 3. So my x squared is 4. 
get the value of x squared both sides so my x is equals to positive or negative 2 so I have my answers as x is equals to 2 positive and x is equals to negative 2 use these points of x to the equation now to obtain the value of y as a coordinate so what is y let me start with positive 2 positive 2 cubed is 8 minus 12 times 2 is 24 plus 15 8 minus 24 is negative 16 negative 16 plus 15 is negative 1 so my y is negative 1 when x is equal to 2 so this coordinate is 2 negative 1 correct when x is negative 2 what happens negative 2 cubed is negative 8 then negative 2 more by negative 12 is positive 24 then plus 15 negative 8 plus 24 is 16 positive plus 15 gives us 31 so this point is negative 2 31 now draw your Cartesian plane having this point is quite big so I'm going to check on my numbering on the Cartesian plane remember your your sketching of the curve must be three quarters of the page so if you have y as 31 you can decide to have 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 negative 5 negative 10 and so forth and so on 1 2 3 4 negative 1 negative 2 and so on and so forth so 2 negative 1 2 and negative 1 somewhere there is negative 5 so negative 1 somewhere there this is 2 then the other one is negative 2 positive 31 negative 2 positive 31 comes this is 30 so 31 we sketch it at that point it means these are my turning points so I can sketch my curve very easily knowing that I'm going to turn somewhere which is this point and this point so I'm going to have my curve coming up turn there come down turn there it can go as many as many possible if you want to the, get the exact points of these points just have this as two three four five six one zero any numbers that you want to get here replace these numbers at point y get the coordinates of these lines if you want to be perfect in that but the point here is for you to sketch you must identify the turning points of any given curve and this is my curve of y is equals to x cubed minus 12x plus 15 remember to write the equation on your graph now math is not must until you have an homework that you can do and get it right or get it wrong get it right you move forward get it wrong you seek you seek a way of getting it right now y is equals to 3x squared plus 4x plus 3 get for me or sketch for me this curve once you sketch you can take a picture of it or a screenshot and send it to us via our social media platforms we shall be able to go through them give you feedback if you got it right or wrong we are here to help you so stay tuned and be blessed <laughs>